the Phony Robin's personal triumph plan. You'll learn that self-esteem is all about appearances and communication. Hmm. This is perfect. Of 15590, you'll be able to see how I made an absolute fortune. Hold on one crumb pick a minute there. Excuse me. You. Antenna head walking towards my kitchen. Hey! What's the big idea? <laughs> the big idea is you're out of milk. Welcome to the documentary channel. And hey! Forty-six of the history. You can't just move into someone's place and freeload. <laughs> Newsflash! My house! My food! My chair! No! Please don't! I I I splatter easily. <laughs> I got nowhere else to go. I can't make it in the outside world. You don't know what it's like being the runt of the family. <laughs> Everyone else succeeding, and you're failing. <laughs> <laughs> Just give me a chance, will you? My whole life's been an uphill battle. <laughs> but you, look at you. You're living the life here. Well, I didn't always have a treehouse on Easy Street, you know. I had to work hard for the good life. Please let me stay. I could learn from you. All right. But if you're gonna stay, you gotta straighten up and fly right. You've gotta hold up your end of the place. Gotta come up with the rent every month. And to do that, you gotta go out and make something of yourself. You've gotta be aggressive. Can't be slacking off or looking for the easy way out of situations. No siree! No more freeloading! Now get out there and make your subspecies proud! You got it, mister. I'm gonna make that change. I'm off like 30 pounds on a grapefruit diet. Look out, world! This is one upwardly mobile cockroach coming at ya! <sighs> Just thinking about all the work he's gonna do is wearing me out. <sighs> Chester the Cockroach has got a job. I'm climbing that ladder of success. You got a job? You bet I did. And I made 50 bucks. Ah, well, uh, good work, Chester. Now you can pay me your part of the rent. But that only leaves me with two dollars. I must have added wrong. Why, you're right, Chester. Hey, now I only have one dollar. Well then, it looks like you need to go get a better job, Chester. Go out there and work, 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 little buddy. Hello, Woody. I got a huge promotion. Everything you taught me is paying off. Good work, Chester. But, uh-oh, inflation, devaluation, taxation. Looks like your rent just went up a hundred bucks. Then there's your water and electric bill, TV privileges. Wait a minute! TV priv? Frequent user fee, occupancy payroll, and the unavoidable what's yours is mine pay now and then pay again later assessment commission. Thank you. Next! Well, how am I supposed to get ahead in life without money? Chester, have I taught you nothing? It's about appearances, networking, and communication. So get out there and make my subspecies proud. <laughs> Check it out, Woody. I got a new car with brakes that could stop a bad day. Ah, time to pay your rent, Chester. <sighs> You know, I'm getting pretty sick and tired of moving up in the world only to have to hand everything over to you. I've changed jobs more often than you've changed socks. You're a disgrace, and it's time to put the teacher to the test. You get a job, Woody. So get out there and work, work, work! Say, what are you up to now, Woodpecker? I'm gonna get a job. A job? <laughs> What's this world coming to? What am I doing? It 
like you can't beat them, move them. You know, little fella, you were right. I was? I got a job in real estate. And you watch me. Soon I'll be more upwardly mobile than the space program. You bet. But a bug with your success shouldn't have to live like this while I'm still pulling myself up by the tail feathers. No, sir. That's exactly what I've been trying to tell you. So, my first real estate deal is to get you set up in a house that's a home in the style to which your money is accustomed. Behold, elegance. And it comes furnished, too. But can I afford... It's not about affording. It's about investing. It's about planning for your future. It's about making things happen. It's about... Well, how much do you have? I've saved ten grand. Say, what are these walrus pictures? You know what? I'm gonna sell this place to you at cost. Sold! Gentlemen, the pride of his subspecies. You know, that little guy was right. I could be a dynamite salesperson. Work my way to the top. Nah. Cardboard is our friend. I get you now by Yemeni. You little cockroach. I get you out of my house. This is my place. What are you doing? Hey, help, help! Crazy walrus! <laughs> well, hello, breakfast. Hey, Wally, buddy, neighbor, pal. Hmm. If it isn't my neighbor, the moocher. Could you possibly spare a small bite? I'm short on groceries this week. Well, sure, chump. Uh, uh, Woody. I'll sample the burger to make sure it's cooked. By Yiminy. Ooh. How rude of me. Wally, buddy, how about that morsel of food? Oh, yeah. Sorry, A forgot. It must have slipped my mind. Yeah! That'll fix you. Why don't you get a job and stop mooching off others? Hey, Wally, your barbecue smells kind of foul. Yeah! Hello? The IRS? I'm being audited? Uh-huh. Uh, oh, no. Oh, and if they see all my food, they think I'm rich for sure. I love a good game of hide and seek. Hello. Uh, can I help? I'm from the Internal Food Revenue Service. Internal Food Revenue Service? Step aside, tax evader. According to official records, you have never, ever filed a food return. By George, it must be a yoke. Does this look like you filed taxes? Ooh, a heavy tax here. Yumpin' yiminy, I'm a law-abiding citizen. I'll be the judge of that. This warrant entitles me to search your premises. Failure to comply could mean jail time. Got it, bub? <coughs> Hmm. Very clever, Mr. Walrus. You've hidden the utensils, too. Quit holding out and produce the goods. I've nothing to hide. We'll see about that. Aha! Incriminating evidence. Looks like jail time to me. Uh, it belongs to, uh, the former owner of the house. The case against you is building, Mr. Walrus. Oh, uh, mm, that's my pet, uh, Lil Orange. It's a half-eaten carrot, genius. That's it. I knew it! Hard 
fried Sicilian salami. But I've never even been to Sicily. Tell it to the judge. This evidence must be treated with the utmost care. It has to be kept in this protective coating and dealt with properly. <laughs> Mr. Walrus, what are you keeping behind this door? Hmm? Try and explain this. That's not an eating ham. That's a plumbing ham. 95% for the government. No, please. I was saving that for my retirement. Explain this. Ah, oh, shucks, Mr. Walrus. You should be ashamed of yourself. Oh, this will cost you dearly. You're going down. Solitary confinement. Oh, no. And that will leave you with... Prison food. No! Anything but that. I confess. I've got food hidden all over the house. Be merciful. It's your audit, Mr. Walrus. <gasps> My food. Hmm? What? IRS, Mr. Walrus. It has come to our attention that you are owing 37 years in back taxes. Huh? But I thought that... Uh, didn't I just... Wait! What are you doing? That leaves you with 1% of your body fat. Your account is fully paid up. Thank you for doing business with the IRS. Mmm, tasty. Mm -hmm. Just a minute. Uh, hello, sport. Could you spare some food for a guy down on his luck? Sure, you're just in time. The delivery truck just came. Fresh logs with all the termites you can eat. Taste like chicken. Dig in. <laughs> Hand over the cow juice, milkmaid. It's Mr. Alias. You get him, Mr. Alias. <laughs> Mr. Alias, man of adventure, triumphs again. Who among you is ready to join me in my life of adventure? Me, me, me. I've made all the arrangements. I've, I've notified, notified the authorities, authorities pulled pull the, the strings, strings and, and greased, greased the, the palms, palms, all to create, create an, adventure an adventure for you. Just send $100 for your very own Adventure in a Box! But I already did! Well, if, if you, you already, already did, did then, then watch your mailbox, mailbox because, because Adventure awaits! Package from Mr. Alias, too large for home delivery. Please pick up at the Oversight Delivery Office. Oh boy, let the adventure begin! Yes, sir, e Baba Link. My adventure in a box. <laughs> nice haircut. Ahem. Regulation 47K, subsection 8, clearly states... No customers on the counter! <laughs> Lady, I just want my package. <laughs> The rules are the rules, Woodpecker. I don't make them, I just carry them out. Ah! Uh -huh, uh -huh. 
There are rules to be followed. <laughs> Wasting stamps. That's another rule you've broken. <laughs> Say, aren't you employee of the month? Oh, aren't you sweet? Let's see if we can get that package for you. Claim slip. I, uh, uh, uh phooey. I seem to have misplaced it. Mm -mm. <laughs> Company rules are very specific about missing claim slips. Hey. Hey. Oh, my. Rule 84, paragraph G, states that customers without claim slips must take a number and wait in line until an official of the company, that would be me, calls his number and verifies his identity. And then there's rule 48K. No touching the rule book! <laughs> now take a number and wait like everybody else. Oh, boy. Number one. Number two. Anyone? Number three. Right here. Number three. Now can I get my box? Yes. See how well everything works when we follow the rules? Now, you may wait in the package line. must be stacked at all times. Direct violation of code 525Z. Trespassing behind my counter! Finger here and help me tie this knot. Later. No scoff law is going to break procedure on my watch. Oh, yeah? Watch me. Woodpecker? Wow! I can't wait to begin my adventure. Come out! Or I'll have so much junk mail delivered to your house it'll look like a paper recycling plant! A Navy officer's uniform. Oh, Woodpecker! I'm coming! But first, I know just what Mr. Alias would do in this situation. Oh, woodpecker! Come on out! I won't hurt you! Hmm? Oh, delivery master general! What are you doing here? A spot inspection? Regulation 39B clearly states employees are to follow orders from their superiors at all times. Yes, sir, Delivery Master General. Now get behind that red line until I tell you to move. On your mark, get set, pack that box, yes. sort that mail, count those stamps, stack that tape, answer that phone, file those invoices. Uh, I'll be there. <laughs> Beat the heat 
Late special. Ice cream cones, only 25 cents. One super duper cool cone, Bob. <laughs> Before I melt. Hey, Wally's Market, cool inside. Hot shot! <laughs> it's a hot bun for sure, but my cool specials will bring in the cool cash, you bet. Say, where's the coolest spot in your market? The cool is for paying customers. Are you buying something, maybe? Listen, buddy. Cool off before I can think about shopping. The heat out there almost melted my beak. Go cool someplace else. Nobody owns cool air. <laughs> Mommy, let's hurry. I want a popsicle. Oh, ho, ho. welcome back to Wally's Market, Mrs. Fanny Winkle. I'm always happy to see my best customer. Yeah. yeah. Ah, cool at last. <laughs> Time for the daily produce inspection. Good coloring, yeah. Firm, very nice rind. Ah, fresh. Mmm, fresher. Freeloading woodpecker! You're not going to use my cool air without paying for something! Psst. Try the melon on the bottom row. Wait a minute! Using your woodpecker! <laughs> you can't hide from me, woodpecker! Mr. Walrus. Ah, Dave, he fresh. Why, you bet. It's the freshest woodpecker I will ever sell, yeah. I'll take it. Oh, man! Up to you by giving 10% off all your purchases. 20%! Mesos Fanny Winkle! Wait! Oh my! <laughs> you want cool, Woodpecker? I give you the cool! <laughs> <gasps> oh, Mrs. Fanny Winkle, wait, wait! Mrs. Fanny Winkle, 
Mrs. Fanny Winkle, as my most valued customer, please accept this rare, one-of-a-kind frozen woodsicle as a gift for your son. Wowie can zowie! A woodsicle! Oh, well. <laughs> if Francis is happy, all right. You're forgiven, Mr. Walrus. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. It's alive! Oh, I will never, ever shop here again! Meat, meat, everywhere meat and not a single vegetable to be found. I really must move to a more civilized climate. <laughs> oh, just so, old chap. What you need is a proper feast of veggies and tapioca pudding. <laughs> One ice rutabaga, some snowball brussel sprouts, and some nice icicle carrots. Bravo! A positively brilliant meal. Satisfied now, old boy? Oh, no! We aren't hungry anymore, old boy. There can be no boiled ham if we are to be proper vegetarians. <laughs> Nor the hot dog. It, too, is a meat by-product. I will have no more of your carnivorous charade shenanigans. Hmm. Perhaps a good snooze will get your mind back in order. Nice warm smell of fire. No, it can't be, but it is a succulent stuffed squab. <laughs> no, oh dear, I really can't go back to my old ways. The life of a carnivore is so detestable. I will not touch the squab. All animal life is precious to me. However, one cannot completely deny one's weaknesses. I wouldn't... Hmm, not bad. Young, nice. Playful yet delicate. Tastes of cinnamon, blueberries, uh, and just a hint of, of. Ah, yes, smoked salmon, of course. <laughs> My finicky feasting must not be fouled by that frigid fowl. Look. 
This is you. This is me. And being a civilized vegetarian, I nonetheless have all the natural urges of my forefathers. The most primal of all these urges is to consume meat products. And so, my dear Jeeves, you being just such a bully meat product yourself, should therefore vamoose. Understand? The dear boy undoubtedly took the hint. After all, you can't argue with logic. Sorry, lad, but I must take drastic measures. Where to, Mac? Oh, uh, the lad would like to go to the North Pole to see Santa Claus. Okay, Mac, load him up. And now, back to my nap. Jolly bad luck. Now look here, Jeeves. You, you can't just bully well go around behaving with such willy minded duckiness. <laughs> <laughs> This is the last straw. I am leaving now, and you will bully well stay here. Do you comprehend? <laughs> oh, what now, old boy? A tropical island? I say, we are due for a vacation, aren't we? And bananas are quite lovely this time of year. To the islands, then! Oh, don't tell me you've grown attached to the diminutive squab now, have you? <laughs> oh, I suppose we could take this little fellow along. You'd finally leave me alone if I took you someplace warm and cosy? <laughs> All right, then it's settled. We'll have a smashing good time. Oh, I'll make us all banana splits, banana pudding, ooh, banana pie, bananas flaming. Oh, boy. At Alexa's Chi-Chi Swank Spa, we treat you like a king, especially if you happen to know one. Woo-wee! A spa for the rich and famous. This is my kind of place. Pardon, moi. International passports, please. Spain, Switzerland, Russia, Bora Bora. Ah, oh, a pleasure to have you back with us, Mr. and Mrs. Newton the Sky. I hope your year-long ski holiday with the King of Sweden was the cat's meow. <laughs> Passport, please. Oh. Lovely to have you back from Avenue C, Main Street, and... Hey, this is a bus pass. You've only been across town. Yeah, but I've been way across town. Only the ultra-rich and famous are allowed in Miss Ida Lux's European spa. We don't think you fit in with the rich and famous woodpecker. <laughs> Miss Lux, my boss has a ribbon. <laughs> well, well, if it isn't Woodpecker's best friend, come to Papa. My, don't you look beatifically today. Whatever. And how is the little Fifu doing? <laughs> Fifu, don't bite the doorman. He could have rabies. Hey, 
so-called doorman. Oh, you poor dear. Good help is so hard to find these days, isn't it? You can say that again. He completely destroyed my expensive urn collection. Not to fret, Miss Lux. I just returned from Valley Valley, and I would love to present this splendid little gift to you as a token of my appreciation for keeping the riffraff out of our spa. Mr. Woodpecker, you have wonderful taste. You must come with us next month to St. Tropez, and then on to Monte Carlo. The figs and mud there are beyond compare. Oh, Woody, be a dear and get Fifu. Then hurry and join us in the limo. Woo-wee! Monte Carlo, limos. You heard what she said. I'm in the money now. <laughs> Awesome red meteorite. It's the third time I've seen it this month. I'll name you Winnie. 
any might. <laughs> Position azimuth 30.1 at 12 degrees in Scorpio. Oh, I wish I could be an astronaut so I could see the stars up close. <laughs> Return to the Torsten Space Launch Center. Wow, this could be my ticket to ride. Look at that. No, you're wrong. Nuclear fission. Oh, a Phillips head. Yes! Excuse me, I'm Winnie Woodpecker. Is this yours? Ah! My medium modern satellite! Hmm. This is what protects Earth. This is bad! A giant blue ice meteor hurtling towards Earth, Professor? Where? That doesn't... We're doomed! Ah! Earth is toast! I need a space crew! Perhaps I could... Oh! It couldn't hurt to just try this on. Ah, my crew person! But I just called. How did you get here so fast? Fax, email... Let's go! But, Professor, I'm I'll not... finish this toast. We've got to stop that meteor! I'm breaking out in hives. Oh, this itches. Oh, this is not good. Bad, bad, bad thing. Need lotion. Ointment would be good. Uh... That'll do it, Professor. Now, there's three reasons why I can help. I'm a fast learner. I don't use up much oxygen. And I'm all you got, mister. So let's get to it. I... Release me now. Yes, sir. No, no, I'm not... Oh! Oh! Professor, there's zero gravity. Must get the satellite out there fast! Winnie, energize my jetpack! Oh, this is my big opportunity to make one giant leap for all woodpeckers! <laughs> yes, who's there? Those kids today. Hurry! It's not! Okay, okay, maybe it's three. Shut the pressures! No! Magnetize the hull! It'll pull me back to the ship! Like that, Professor! <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> Just a second, Professor! Minor snafu! <laughs> this is not good! <laughs> Please stop the... Amateurs! <laughs> Let's get this satellite back into orbit. Listen carefully! I'm all ears, Professor. Well, I mean, not literally. Of course, I have hands and feet, and some say a cute beak. Quiet! Now activate the robot arm! Activating the robot arm! Easy, easy. Easy, easy. It sure looks easy. <laughs> What did I do to deserve this? Please, be gentle. Working in space is harder than I ever imagined, Professor. Oh my goodness! What? I can't see. Help me with my helmet. It's the giant blue ice meteor. If it is, we need to stop it. Track the beam. No. Death ray? No. Get my helmet off! I've got everything under control, Professor! <laughs> uh, well, maybe not everything, everything. I wanted to be remembered as the one who saved the Earth. Now I'm the one who destroyed it with... with a giant ice chicken! <laughs> Oh, you won't be remembered for that, Professor. It's a giant ice swan. Oh. We need something big, something powerful to destroy that star fowl. Winnie might. <laughs> Position, azimuth 30.1 at 12 degrees in Scorpio. That's it! 
What? Leaving? Where are you going? Like I always say, Professor, when in doubt, improvise! Okay, Professor, I've packed the dynamite onto the meteor. Dynamite? What are you thinking? Just this! <laughs> A giant ice rubber! It won't help, Winnie. It's still on course. Only now for the other side of Earth! Yep, Professor. And right into the path of my beautiful red Winnie-mite! Professor Quark, could you tell our viewers how you managed to save Earth? Oh, well, I, uh, she, no, what, what did she say? What Professor Quark means is that together we fired these lasers at the ice meteor and... <laughs> Just in. I'm getting word the National Space Division has reported some unauthorized laser activity. It has knocked a red meteor onto a collision course with Earth. And this one's in the shape of a giant woodpecker. Come on, Professor. We've got work to do. What? Oh, hello? No! Space woodpeckers! Dangerous! It's... I'm breaking out in hives again! of this here establishment. Ribbit. Ribbit, now, if you want them eggs, you skedaddle into the barn here. You can have all the eggs you can carry. Yes, Ree. <laughs> Most likely to be scrambled. Egg schmegs. I'll give you something to cluck about. 
Oh, my darling, oh, my darling, oh, my darling, until the oh. end. I heard your eggs are truly amazing. Had to meet you, see how you been. Oh. Hey there, Feather Pie. I'm Booster, the giant rooster. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm just an old country rooster. Looking for a nest to share with a champion egg layer like you, my little chickadee. Oh. How's about sweets for a sweetie? <laughs> yeah, now we're getting somewhere. One custom-made nest cozy to keep those little champs ears warm, mama. Oh. Now come on out here so as I can meet you beat to beat. Get her where it hurts. Oh, the fair's coming early this year, so I've come to pick out your best egg for entry and competition. We got a lot of big eggs this year. Don't know if yours are gonna qualify. Hmm, maybe. Possibly, yeah, if you're lucky. Oh, oh, oh. Mm, I'll have to take these for an official review. If you don't hear from us, it's because there were bigger, better eggs out there. In all the years me and Mort been doing this, you're the first one to get an egg. And that's some egg. What's the secret? Well, fellas, sometimes you gotta break a few eggs to make an omelet. <laughs> so what say maybe you'd like a chance at a free side of bacon? Hmm, bacon. As a wildlife ranger, I'm sworn to protect all endangerous critters in these here harsh weather conditions. That means making sure the rare albino polar bear who lives in this here cave has food to eat all winter long, a nice warm place to make nappy time, and some entertainment appliances for his personal enjoyment. Now to get myself acquainted with the big fella. Huh? Now, just what the heck's going on hereabouts? Well, well, what have we here? Why, you're just a normal, everyday penguin. And this here stuff is for endangerous critters like the albino polar bear. So get! That big fella'll sleep like a baby cub on this here posterior pedic. 
You gotta be real careful with these ornery bear types. They can be mighty standoffish if and you don't make a good first impression. Say! Now you listen here, little fella. This bed is designed for the slumbering of one albino polar bear. Now come back here and... Yeah, hello there, mister. Well, my first encounter with the big fella didn't go so swell, but food is real hard to come by out here, and I'm sure this here Phil at Mignon will warm him up to me. Mr. Bear, got you some delectables. I'll stay 20 paces away from the critter to show him that I am in no way his predator. This here penguin is really starting to crush my eyes. Sure is a heavy little fella. Y'all might want to avert your eyes. This is gonna hurt a bit, I reckon. It says in the Ranger Handbook, when in pain, always revert to the standard operating declaration. Ouch! Stay out of my preserve, little fella. I'm as sure as snow on Christmas that this big screen TV will win back <laughs> that fella's affections. <laughs> I'll just put the set on mute and program all the educational-like channels for this big fella's edification. <laughs> hmm, looks like my first aid training's gonna come in mighty handy in a few seconds. <laughs> You are banished from these here parts until such time as you are in dangerous, rare, or unique, which will be never. I am officially pronouncing this banished penguin territory, so you stay put. Well, hi and howdy there, little purple penguin. Don't see much of your kind around these parts. Wait a minute. You know, I'm not as dumb as he looks. <laughs> there ain't no such thing as a purple penguin, Mr. Purple Penguin. Impersonating an endangerous type critter is a serious offense against nature. You know what? That's not a half bad look for you, Mr. Bear. Aha! It is the ultra rare tropical penguin and the tropical polar bear. What a find! Now, just a credit catching minute here, short stuff. These creatures are in my charge, and I. For shame! A member of the Ranger Service chasing such endangered creatures? No, 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 no. These little ones deserve better. They deserve the tropical four star treatment. <laughs> <laughs> 
And you, my Arctic Ranger friend, will be sweeping out the tropical preserve paradise when I report you to headquarters! Whew. It sure is hot working here in this tropical nature preserve. <laughs> oh well, at least it's a dry heat.